Hello out there to all of you powerboating enthusiasts and those of you who follow us here on our Florida Powerboat Club YouTube channel. This is Stu Jones, and we are now continuing with episode three and feature coverage of the Miami Boat Show Poker Run, celebrating 25 years with members of the Florida Powerboat Club on an event that showcases the leading manufacturers in the performance marine trade. Florida Powerboat Club's 2020 series sponsors include Deep Impact Custom Boats and their associated brand, Blackwater Boats, Nortec High Performance Boats, Midnight Express Power Boats, Myco Trailers, Performance Boat Center, Mystic Power Boats, Superior Communications, and Mercury Racing Wide Open. When we left off on our last episode, the power boaters had made their way from North Miami down through the Port Miami to Grove Harbor Marina in Coconut Grove where we rendezvoused with some more boaters and everybody got their second poker run card and they were idling out into the bay waters as we left them off, getting ready to hit the throttles and head south on Biscayne Bay to Key Largo. Our FPC crew is flying in a Robinson R-44 helicopter as they chase down powerboat teams that have come from all over United States, Canada, and Europe to attend this annual event in February. And I can't think of a better team than Roger and Pam Anderson all the way from Texas in Team Easy Money 2. This is a Nortec 390 Sport. Uh, take a close look at some of the features. They've got the extended T-top and the second row stand-up seating so that altogether six people can be tucked in behind that center console. Roger and Pam usually have at least six people on board, but they're traveling light this weekend, just the two of them to enjoy their weekend together. Now let's say hi to Michael and Nicole Lund, all the way from Massachusetts in their 42-foot Outer Limits. It's a legacy model called Seagull Sizzler, and I looked up their profile, and they're from the Borden Light Marina. They actually own and operate that marina just uh, about an hour south of Boston. And I checked out their website, and boy, what a great location uh, where they have this marina on the doorstep to abundant cruising grounds. And I happen to notice that on site at the marina, they have the Tipsy Seagull, which is a floating bar at the marina, and also a restaurant called the Tipsy Toboggan. It appears to me to be a very huge and very successful marina one day. I hope to visit them up there with Project 1080 Cigarette. And here's a closer look at that Outer Limits Legacy 2002 model. Something very unique about this boat, triple engines. He's got triple Chief 725s, a total of 2,100 plus horsepower, which by today's standards you can get with just two engines. So if you want to own and maintain a triple engine powerboat like this, it doesn't hurt to own a marina with a service department. Oh, hey, by the way, Mike, it's the ladies that are supposed to flash, right? But we'll give you a few points for enthusiasm. And speaking of enthusiasm, well, I don't think you're going to get a guy or his crew that are more spirited and more jazzed up for these poker runs than Jimmy Lee and his friends. They all piled into this little 28-foot skater. Haven't seen this boat for a long time. One of Jim's uh, collection of at least three or four power boats. Nice to see the skater back. And here's a great group shot that really illustrates the variety of boats you'll get on these poker runs starting with Tom Archer in this Baja 38-foot special, a boat that hasn't been built for years, then following over to this Sonic 36 center console, powered by twin Mercury outboards and belonging to John Wittenberger Sr. And then there's Jimmy Lee in the background in his 28 skater. So it really illustrates just how many different types of boats run on these poker runs. And we have a class for every boat that's registered on the event, a total of three classes and what that does is it really just ensures there's going to be other boats for you to run alongside. And here's another example of what I just mentioned. Sal Olivia passes by in his 42X. It's powered by Mercury Racing 700s, a cigarette performance V-bottom. And he's followed up by this 35-foot Motion Cat piloted by Michael Tandoy. And it's got a pair of Mercury Racing 525s. But the two boats, although they're very different in so many ways, they pretty much cruise at similar speeds, you know, around the 75 mile an hour mark. And that's why they both fit into the performance class. And these guys could run alongside each other all day long and be comfortable at the speeds they're cruising. We've seen a lot of uh, Michael's 35 motion, this reckless endangerment, six counts. Uh, in the last three runs, he did Key West and then 
the winter poker run and now again here on the Miami run but I think it's the last time we're going to see this motion because he has got himself a brand new skater so it's going to be bye bye to the motion cat and hello to the skater when we see him on the next run now catching up with Sal Olivia again in this Escape from New York is 42X powered by Mercury Racing 700s and a very good showing from the cigarette brand here on this event a total of 10 registered cigarettes on the run three of them are 42s and two of those are 42x models one is a huntress now moving to some high performance class boats scott and stacy rosenbach in this 48 foot mti team reach around and it's uh, one of two boats scott has entered on the run his other one is the 57 foot mti center console this boat was completely redone repainted by performance boat center in missouri uh, the boat came to the Key West Poker Run last year and it won Best Paint and Graphics. And I love this shot. You can really see what fantastic conditions we have here on Biscayne Bay for really any size boat. And uh, that certainly applies to John Wittenberger Jr. and this 30 foot Spectre Cat. What a textbook move as the helicopter pilot swings the helicopter around and then falls into hot pursuit. That was the money shot right there. This is a great boat if you want to get into poker runs. I would say, you know, entry level, a 30-foot cat with a pair of 300s. Doesn't get much easier than this, guys. Not a lot of maintenance on this boat. And when the conditions are ideal, as they are today here on Biscayne Bay, four people can have a lot of fun in this 30-foot cat. Or, moving up the food chain a few steps, you can have this brand new Right Performance 360 with Mercury Racing 450s for about a half a mil. And now catching up with Michael Caravetta from Ontario, Canada with this 46-foot cigarette Rough Rider uh, he purchased recently. It's a 2007 model, which he purchased at the time with 1075s. He's been working with Trace Martin on this boat. You know, he told me he was aiming for a 47 Apache, but this 46 Rough Rider came along, and it was the perfect match. They started out with a complete repower to Mercury Racing 1100s. I mistakenly reported the 1350s on the last show, so I was wrong on that count. But he also redid the interior, all new Alcantara. And I fell in love with the paint job, so I awarded him the President's Choice for the best paint and graphics on this poker run. But what did Mike do? Well, he went straight to Stephen Miles Design and said, you know what? I would prefer it to look a different way. <laughs> so he completely is having the boat redone with a Stephen Miles paint job, and I can't wait to see it. Here's a little sneak peek that Mike just sent me of what is currently being done uh, with the paint uh, by Stephen Miles Design, who, let's face it, we all know he's one of the best in the business. We should all be able to see the finished result if Mike can attend the Key West Poker Run in November. That's if they let him out of Canada. This COVID thing is still a big problem with these national borders. And here is a boat that proves beyond a shadow of doubt that there are no limits when it comes to offshore power boats and what we might see on these poker run events. Scott and Stacy Rosenbach's 57 foot MTI center console powered by not three, not four, but five Mercury Racing 450Rs. So clearly that is one incredible machine. It's the only one like it to date. I'm sure we'll see more eventually. Uh, but I had a chance to ride alongside uh, this boat on the MTI fun run in March. I was cruising with Bill Pybarn on his 42 MTI. We were running about 82 miles per hour, and I looked over beside us, and there it was, right alongside. And now catching up once again with Del Flores and his 39-foot velocity team, Spartan Power Boats. And like I said earlier, guys, we don't see these velocities much anymore. I built a lot of these back in the 90s here, right in Florida. But uh, nice job on this one. I spoke to the guys up at the factory in Sanford, Florida. Apparently, they're getting back into high performance uh, with this 390 model, one of them. They also have a new model called the 40 VRX, uh, powered by Mercury Racing Outboards. And you can see just the amount of freedom we have out here on Biscayne Bay on this beautiful Thursday morning. Now catching up with uh, Jim Lee's 39 cigarette, Don Doty from Michigan on board, and uh, Bubba Crisco from Oklahoma at the helm. Enjoying this beautiful day here. And you gotta love bikinis in February. And 
Hal Johnson from Michigan, uh, spending a lot of his winters down here at his new condo in Fort Lauderdale, uh, right there by the Port Everglades Inlet. But it's kind of a reunion now for the boys from Michigan celebrating the life of David Postel, a good friend of ours that we lost in May of 2019 to cancer. Uh, Dave, of course, was a very active and a big player with the club for many years, a lot of different performance boats. And all these guys on board are pretty hardcore offshore guys. They all own power boats. And uh, more time for this adrenaline rush. That's what we called our last show because we had both of the adrenalines, this 47-foot ZRX model and the 46-foot outboard powered speed uh, running side by side in the last episode. But now time to spend with this uh, 47. Jackie and I rode on board, Brad Schoenwald at the helm, and our producer Ryan McCoy in the back seat as well. But it was kind of fun to be reunited with Brad because, of course, we go back so many years. Uh, Brad got involved with the Florida Powerboat Club back in about 2004 and five, and he helped us out with a lot of the safety management programs that we now have in place. Of course, Brad is a retired Coast Guard, but he spends a lot of time doing performance driving uh, instruction through the Trace Martin School, but he also does a lot of consulting with Merchant Marine and the cruise ship industry. So a very busy guy in his uh, second career post-U.S. Coast Guard uh, duty as a civil servant. And now up in the helicopter looking down on this boat, I've got to say score of 10.0 for cool factor. And another equally cool manufacturer being featured now today, uh, Midnight Express Powerboats from Miami. Eric Glazer on board with this Midnight Express 43 Open, one of the most popular models that they build at their Miami factory. And we've seen so many of these boats on our Florida Powerboat Club poker runs, not only here in Florida, but you go around the country now and start hitting poker runs all over the nation. And these Midnight Express models have made their way into the culture of poker runs and the power boating lifestyle. Of course, Midnight has one other model that really does steal the show everywhere it goes. Uh, they brought it on this uh, same event, Miami Boat Show Poker Run, a year earlier, and that's the new 60 p Mar. We actually caught up with Eric Glazer at the Miami International Boat Show, and he told us about his full line of boats, including some new models. Midnight Express always has a very impressive display here at the Miami International Boat Show. Eric Glazer here to tell us all about it. Eric, you've got a lot of bling as always, a lot of big Mercury Racing 450Rs. Of course, you know, you were at the Nashville launch for that motor, um, so it looks like they made sure you got a lot more after that. Uh, it's, it's obviously getting to be a big part of your, your lineup to have these new 450s on your Midnight Express brands. Yeah, they're awesome. We're uh, pretty much everybody's ordering them. It's, uh, we're ordering them as fast as they can build them. And people are ordering boats faster than we can build them. So Now, uh, we're here standing on this new 43 that made it to the Key West Poker Run. David Landsman's boat, we all know David, uh, a very active club member. He always does something different with his boats. Uh, from start to finish. I mean, there's so many features on this boat that I haven't really seen on that many before. First of all, with those four jail audio bullets hanging off the top, and they stay there full time, I'm guessing, to the interior, to the orange engines. I mean, really, I mean. Yeah, he's uh, he always builds a unique boat. It always gets a lot of attention. We did all the cool color change stuff in this boat. We did the color change lights and the motors to match everything. Everything's digital, uh, and it is loud as could be. It's, yeah. a, it's got a Sea Keeper in it also. Oh, it has a Sea Keeper. What model Sea Keeper would you use? This boat has a Sea Keeper 3 in it. Now, right beside that, we have another brand new boat, a 37, that was, uh, it did its first poker run at the Key West Poker Run, uh, Quad 400 Rs. That's another Maryland uh, owner uh, that's a member of the Florida Powerboat Club, and two more over there. What is it, Eric, about the 37 that people love? I mean, I think it's just a sexy boat, uh, substantially smaller, lighter, uh, you know, less beam just less boat overall but still um very popular boat everyone seems to love these 37s you keep building them yeah it's it's the, the new layout's great people love that um and it runs it's a fast boat it's good in rough water yeah. um and it's a little bit easier to maneuver for the guys that are a little intimidated by the 43. right so a lot of people like it and we'll keep building them as long as people keep ordering them well, we've uh, visited the factory many times. Uh, not too long ago, we stopped by the factory, saw some of the builds. Uh, how's the 60 program coming? Because I know that's not exactly, not every boater's gonna order a 60. It's a huge boat, 
Uh, takes a lot of power to push it, but runs great. You brought it on the Miami Boat Show Poker Run last year. Are you getting people to order this boat? Or have you got other other ones being built or yes, lined up? Number two is finally almost done. We were trying to have it done for the show. We're running behind as typical boat building fashion. And that one's gonna have six 450 uh, Merc Racing motors on it. Nice. It's gonna be a really awesome boat. We did a couple different things on it for finishes, a couple little options that are different. And we're starting number three in the next couple of weeks as well and hope to have that done by the end of the year. Eric, uh, once again, thanks for your great support of the Florida Powerboat Club and really for putting on a fantastic booth here uh, with one, two, three, four, five boats on display and one out on the uh, on the sea trial, two on the sea trial dock as well. So uh, a great display from midnight here at the Miami Boat Show. And one thing I would like to add about Midnight Express and their brand, they like to thank their loyal customers by having a Midnight Express owner's rendezvous every year. Uh, we had it to Bimini last year in uh, May of 2021. We'll be returning to Bimini again. And now we're picking up with uh, Joe Balistrieri in his 33-foot Everglades. He's our official safety boat. And you know what I say, guys? Safety boats need love, too. You know, they're an important part of this event. And I always tell the guys in the chopper, spend a little time with them because they need to be recognized. Joe is from Lighthouse Point, Florida. This is not his first rodeo with the club. He's helped us out on the Key West Poker Run, and he assisted on this event a year earlier. He's got two Miami-Dade Fire Rescue paramedics on board. He's going to run them all the way down to Key Largo with us today and back to the Port Miami, and chances are he'll do it again on Friday. So thanks to Joe. A big shout-out for all of your help with our safety management program that commenced right on this same event back in 2013. Seven years, wow. And one more time here with Hal Johnson in his 39 foot Nortex. Something's brewing. Well, that's of course because he's a beer distributor from Michigan, or at least he was. He recently sold the company. He's now retired. He gets to spend more time in South Florida in his Nortec, and when he's back in Michigan in the summer months, well, it's a 38-foot cigarette. Not a bad lifestyle. And it looks like a lot of the pack has already arrived here at Gilbert's in Key Largo, and I love this shot because it really shows off that new dock, and those new finger pairs have really helped out to give us more space, especially for the really big boats, you know, like the big 48-foot MTIs and the big cats. Uh, those finger pairs have really come in handy. It really is a unique property in so many ways, and a lot of people don't realize they have a ton of docking over on the back side of the island. Uh, still some transient dockage there. They used to have a lot of old liveaboards in there that was a lot of derelict boats that they finally got out of there, and it's really changed Gilbert's, in my opinion, not just as a boating lunch stop, but really as a boating destination. Uh, they've upgraded the hotel rooms, done a great job. Um, the Tiki Bar has just constantly been upgraded, and they have such a capacity here to, you know, feed people, entertain people at the same time. I remember back in the day when, you know, if we had 200 plus people, it was a big push to make that happen, but now they'll handle 350, no problem. And on a Sunday, Gilbert's will do over a thousand plates. Essentially, that's the number of people that ordered a dinner or a lunch. And I think that's pretty amazing uh, for a place that's in the Florida Keys. And you can be there when it's full and it never seems overcrowded. It's always got a great casual atmosphere and uh, it's such a great boat ride just to get there, you know, only 45 miles from Miami. Arriving here now in Jewfish Creek, the last uh, pack of boats, you know, we're running towards the back of the pack here in the adrenaline, uh, making sure everybody got in safely. Uh, Miss Jackie here uh, getting her hair fixed and that life jacket off. And sadly, you know, this is almost the end of our boat ride because this is the shortest poker run we do on the entire schedule. Remember, we just go from Miami to Key Largo. And then from here, uh, the boaters can take, you know, day trips in different directions. But it really is the shortest poker run uh, to Key Largo and back only about 120 miles total. And a little bit of a dark cloud off in the distance there, but the weather seems to be holding out overall. Uh, we had some rain threatened, but I think we were okay. Nothing really hit us too hard. But from this image, you can see just the variety of the kind of boats that are here with these performance V-bottoms on the right, and of course, the outboard cats, and then the stern drive catamarans, um, and performance V-bottoms of every description. You know, this is an event that brings out the biggest and the baddest, and that's what makes these events so cool. So let's just sit back and enjoy the arrival process here as everybody gets situated. Lines and fenders out so they can get rafted up and into Gilbert's and have a great lunch stop.
Well, a great start to what's going to become a four-day weekend here as we join members of the Florida Powerboat Club celebrating 25 years of the Miami Boat Show Poker Run, once named the Manufacturer's Rally. Well, why do we call it that? Because we're featuring all of the latest high-performance boats that just left the Miami Boat Show. A lot of the boats that were on display just three days ago are here on this run today. An early start with this Thursday run, about 32 boats registered for today as we head down to Gilbert's. Not much farther to go, about 10 miles more as we reach Playa Largo and Baker's Cay Resort here in Key Largo. We got a new property over on the Oceanside Mariners Club where some of us are going to go, but altogether about 55 boats registered for this weekend celebration. Beautiful day here today, pretty cloudy, a little bit of light rain on the way. All it managed to do was cool us off because it is a hot day here going up to well into the 80s today as we reach Gilbert's here for lunch. And uh, we're probably just going to chill out and have a nice time here because we've only got 10 miles to go. So we're getting things kicked off here with the members of the Florida Powerboat Club on this very festive Miami Boat Show Poker Run. Let's check out the boats. Let's go see who's having the most fun today. Well, I can assure you that it's as much fun inside here under the Tiki Hut as it is outside on the docks checking out all these cool boats. But the cool vibe is what makes it uh, so great visiting Gilbert's. And you know you've arrived in the Florida Keys. And with Bobby Brown uh, playing the music, the live music, he's a regular here uh, almost every one of our events. There he is. He always invites me up to join him and uh, talk to you guys and you know get everybody all pumped up for the weekend and I can't imagine Gilbert's without Bobby Brown here playing his music but uh, everybody having a nice visit the food is so fantastic I think you guys can all agree they do such a wonderful job and as soon as you walk in underneath this tiki hut you know hey I'm here I'm in the Florida Keys and now I'm on vacation and I think that that's how everyone feels that's how I feel every time so let's enjoy the music by Bobby Brown and just wander around here at Gilbert's and under the Tiki Bar and say hi to our Poker Run friends and some of our locals that just came by to check out the party. Well, that was a fantastic lunch, and uh, now all of the boats have finally managed to arrive where the last couple are trickling in at this time. And you can just see how many boats we can pile in here to the docks at Gilbert's. And everyone's got a comfortable space. Everyone really cooperated with the rafting. I think you guys did a wonderful job. And look, at there was still quite a bit of space down here at the north end of the dock where the adrenaline was docked. We still had room for another 15 or 20 boats. That's what's great about Gilbert's. If everybody follows the protocols and has your lines and the fenders ready. And if we put the boats together in some kind of a normal organized fashion, outboard cats alongside other cats and 50 foot D bottoms and 50 foot cats tied up together. So we try to match the lengths of the boats and the gunnel height of the boat and keeping the gaps closed uh, so there's no empty space in between. That's how you can get a lot of boats into Gilbert's and that's the best way to do these raft ups on all these big poker run events that have 50, 60 or more teams registered for one stopover. So this is the time of the day when everybody kind of spills out onto the docks and we're not really in a big hurry because if this was the Key West Poker Run, we would be. We've still got 110 miles to go. Uh, and typically, a shorter daytime, you know, daylight ends at about 5.30 in November. But here we are in February and we've got 10 miles to go. So at 2.30 in the afternoon, there's not really a big hurry to get anywhere. Remember that the hotels have requested that we try not to arrive before 3.30 so they can do their normal check-in process, which for most hotels is late afternoon after three o'clock or closer to 4 p.m. Hi guys, we are out here in Key Largo for the Florida Powerboat Club Run, and we're at Gilbert's today. We got all the beautiful boats lined up and we're ready to head out. 
So I can't think of a better time than now for our FPC girl, Melissa Everhart, to get out on the docks and check out the boats, say hi to our club members, and let everybody know we're going to be pulling out real soon. And of course, let's not forget that important task of handing out that next lucky poker card. Well, it looks like uh, Team Branton ready to pull off the dock here in their 48-foot MTI. And uh, we've got uh, Reagan, our crew member, on the back. That's James Branton's girlfriend. And i got to say, this uh, the gal is trained. She has got it down. She got both fenders saved and into the cockpit of the boat. No help. <laughs> There's David and James up in the cockpit. She goes, I got this, guys. I got this. Got the line off. Um, got the boat off the dock. Got the line still on. She goes to pull the line off. Then she sees when David backs up a little to get away from the other boats. She happens to look over and see the stern quarter of the boat, the right corner, is coming in close to the dock. So while she's wrapping up the line, she's like, nope, 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 I got to get over here. Reaches over, keeps the boat from going under the dock and hitting that piling, and then clears it. And then she's back to her business of, okay, I got this. I got the line now. <laughs> she's back in the boat. So Reagan on the back and Leanne up on the front. Great job, girls. While well, we jumped on board with a team Seakeeper for the ride back to Miami to get the next group. So we cut John Wittenberger loose here with the 36 Sonic. I think he had one engine problem and he kind of limped in. Uh, so he got some assistance and they pulled him into the dock. But take a good look, guys, because... This 36-foot Sonic center console, which has done an amazing tour of duty on our events on the rocks. It will eventually move on to a new owner, but it's retired from the club for the time being because John got himself a 39-foot cigarette center console. Not this one that belongs to Jim Lee, but one just like it uh, with triple mercury upwards, and uh, we're going to see that on the next poker run. So as all of the teams pull off the dock and uh, now put the boats into the Intracoastal for this next 10-mile trip, uh, to the resorts, which are going to be the Playa Largo Resort and the Baker's Key Resort, and the newest addition to our venue partners at Mariner's Cove from the Oceanside. So that came quickly, but we've already hit the 30-minute mark, guys, and that means it's time to sign off here from episode number three with feature coverage of our Miami Boat Show Poker Run with members of the Florida Power Boat Club celebrating 25 years of this annual event that takes place every February. So in our next episode, we'll have more highlights of that really cool ride through the Upper Keys as we arrived at our luxury resorts in Key Largo. And then we'll head back with the Team Seakeeper to Miami so we can do it all over again with the Friday group featuring plenty of high-speed thrills and all of the leading high-performance manufacturers as we push the throttles and take that exciting ride from Miami to Key Largo for four days of power boating in paradise fun. So thanks for joining us here on YouTube. Remember that if you want to catch all of the new episodes, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so that you get all of the updates when a new show comes out. You can follow us on the club website to get all of the updates on club membership and upcoming poker run events. Of course, on social media, we're on Facebook at Florida Power Boat Club, as well as Instagram and on Twitter. If you want to send me any comments about the show, feel free to reach me at Stu, S-T-U, at flpowerboat.com. This is Stu Jones, along with producer Ryan McCoy at the Pompano Beach Studios. Thanks for watching. When you get out on your power boat, remember to be safe, you're in control, wear your life jackets, and always be respectful to your fellow boaters. Bye for now. Florida Power Boat Club's 2020 series sponsors include Deep Impact Custom Boats and their associated brand, Blackwater Boats, Nortec High Performance Boats, 
Midnight Express Power Boats, Myco Trailers, Performance Boat Center, Mystic Power Boats, Superior Communications, and Mercury Racing Wide Open.